What is going on, IF Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today is a really special day. And it's because I found this somewhat scientific call to action that was done on Cambridge.org. It was put on Cambridge.org, in which a bunch of uh, researchers, a bunch of you know scientists got together. Ian Templeman, Javier T. Gonzalez, Dylan Thompson, James A. Betts, and they're simply talking about the problems that are found in these meta-analysis that are done with intermittent fasting. And it's so beautiful to read this because this is literally the call that I've been making every single time. The push that I've been talking about every single time when it comes to intermittent fasting. There's a lot of information out there that can be used to confuse people about the intermittent fasting regimen. Because intermittent fasting is an umbrella term, so many different intermittent fasting protocols fall in that category. If a 5-2 diet is used in a study and it shows that it's not effective, the title can be intermittent fasting isn't effective versus caloric restriction. If there's an alternate day fasting system, a modified alternate day fasting system where the, where, where the participants can eat up to 1,000 calories in their fasting window, it can say, the, ti the title and the conclusion can state, intermittent fasting isn't superior to caloric restriction based on these results. And then, anyone can run with that anyone who's anti-intermittent fasting or anti-science and trying to just learn about science or trying to open their minds to science anyone who's anti any of that is going to run with this uh, one of the biggest things that have uh, really been very misleading is the 40 study meta-analysis that people love to use because that's the hierarchy of, of studies uh, Meta-analysis is considered the best um, tool to determine how accurate a conclusion to any specific question might be. For example, intermittent fasting versus caloric restriction. If you take studies, multiple studies, and what a meta-analysis is, is a study of multiple studies, putting them together and getting the results looking at all of them and then determining all these studies put together show that there is a difference or that it is superior or that it isn't superior. But the 40 study meta-analysis that a lot of people like to touch on because it's a meta-analysis and that's what you do when you're looking at studies and we're trying to create conclusions. The conclusion of that study is that intermittent fasting isn't superior to caloric restriction. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you don't need caloric restriction, you have to have caloric restriction. Yes, you do. The arguments that are being made is that does intermittent fasting, is it better for things like fat loss? Because you can be at an energy deficit lose weight but how much of that is fat loss how much of that is muscle loss that's the thing that's trying to be narrowed down that 40 study meta-analysis is literally 40 useless studies <laughs> of all the 40 studies only six of the studies even compared the two intermittent fasting versus caloric restriction so all the other ones they're useless in terms of comparison so basically it's really just a six study meta-analysis and then all six of those studies allow the participant to consume calories during their fasting window. Up to a thousand calories, 650, some were just eating at a caloric deficit and they consider that intermittent fasting because it's so broad. So here's a call to action and I never read a full abstract, but I I definitely, I'm going to read this full abstract for you guys so that you see how amazing this is in terms of the call to action, to looking at the correct studies zero caloric intake not pretending that the caloric intake ones are what what matters we want to see what happens to the body when you do zero caloric intake and i'll tell you why i'm excited about this so now i'm going to go ahead and read the abstract really quickly the title of this which is on cambridge.org is the role of intermittent fasting and meal timing in weight management and metabolic health abstract i'm trying to read this as quickly as possible but this is beautiful. Obesity remains a major public health concern and intermittent fasting is a popular strategy for weight loss. 
which may present independent health benefits. However, the number of diet books advising how fasting can be incorporated into our daily lives is several orders of magnitude greater than the number of trials examining whether fasting can be uh, encouraged at all. This review will consider the state of current understanding regarding various forms of intermittent fasting. The efficacy of these temporarily defined approaches appeared broadly equivalent to that of standard daily energy restriction. Although many of these models of intermittent fasting do not involve fed fasted cycles every other 24 hour sleep wake cycle and or permit some limited energy intake outside of prescribed feeding times. Accordingly, the intervention period therefore may not regularly alternate, may not span all or even most of any given day, and may not even involve absolute fasting. This is important because potentially advantageous physiological mechanisms may only be initiated if a post-absorptive state is sustained by uninterrupted fasting for a more prolonged duration than applied in many trials. That, that was literally like the sentence that just like touched my heart because that's what I've been pushing so much and why I push against these meta-analysis that do not use zero caloric intake when you're fasting. You're stumping the entire process, the entire hormonal metabolic switchover is completely stumped when you allow them to eat. It's not fasting anymore. Indeed, promising effects on fat mass and insulin sensitivity have been reported when fasting duration is routinely extended beyond 16 consecutive hours. Further progress will require such models to be tested with appropriate controls to isolate whether any possible health effects of intermittent fasting are primarily attributable to regular protracted post-absorptive periods or simply to the net negative energy balance indirectly elicited by any form of dietary restriction. So basically, this is not a study. It's somewhat of a call to action and a summarization of what is out there. But what this is saying, and because it is, and because it was published in such a prestige um, location, you know, Cambridge, um, it's it's giving the th it's putting that thought process out there, setting it out into the world to all these scientists, to all these researchers, to start constructing these studies, looking at intermittent fasting with zero caloric intake to see what the importance of those studies are. Stop creating all of these never ending intermittent fasting studies that have caloric intake during your feeding time. They even talked about the post absorptive range that, that I've been referring to in all of my videos. That's important. If you go beyond that post absorptive range and you extend your fast without disruption, without raising insulin, without disrupting your HGH um, increase, the IGF-1, without doing any of that, leaving that lingering within the fasted period, what are the benefits of that? Now, there are studies, and I've shown you many studies that, that talk about that, that look at when you are actually fasted completely, and they always show different beneficial things with intermittent fasting. There are some studies where they keep the caloric intake at maintenance for both groups and still metabolic health factors are increased or uh, are better in the intermittent fasting group than just the caloric restriction group. Muscle retention has been shown to be better in the intermittent fasting group than just the caloric restriction group. When things are, when everything is equated, and I'm talking about the full control in terms of protein, which is super important, carbs and fats, everything being equated, intermittent fasting has shown superior muscle retention versus just caloric restriction when losing body fat. And one of the most important things and one of the most important drivers for your metabolic rate is lean tissue. So if you can find a way to reduce weight and preserve muscle, you can also inadvertently protect your metabolic rate from metabolic adaptation to weight loss which has affected many people who have 
a lot of weight to lose. Uh, look at the Biggest Loser study where they go back and they see that their metabolic rate was still suppressed from losing all of that weight, making it harder uh, for them to lose weight again. And they've most of them have gotten all their weight back and then some. So how hard would it be for them now? It was very difficult back then. Now it's going to be even more difficult because their uh, metabolic rate is suppressed. So we can do things to protect metabolic rate, like protecting lean muscle tissue while losing body fat at the same time. That's amazing. Um, but all these, you know, all these studies and everybody out there who's pushing up against intermittent fasting want to put all these studies that have caloric intake that isn't triggering all of those metabolic uh, switchover effects. So I'm so happy because this can start the, the wheel. This can start turning the wheel. I'm just a guy on YouTube looking at studies. We need people like this to put this information out there so that people can say, hmm, okay, let's structure a study using zero caloric intake. Let's look at that. And putting this information out there helps uh, publish your, 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 uh, your articles and have them peer reviewed and all of that stuff. These things help uh, a lot. So it's important, it's very, 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 very important that this call to action was made because I can make videos until I'm blue in the face about why this study is inaccurate based on what your perception of the intermittent fasting protocol is because this is not the protocol that you're thinking of. That study is not the 16-8. That study is not the warrior diet, 20 hours of fasting, four hours of eating. That study is not one meal a day. That study is allowing people to eat so when I have to do this defense thing and, and show the other side of the coin, when what happens when you do have zero caloric intake, it, it, it's, it becomes a little bit frustrating. So I'm so happy that this is happening. More studies come out. If we get a good chunk, then a meta-analysis can be made. And when you look at a meta-analysis and these are the studies, the zero caloric intake studies, we're gonna get a very accurate depiction of what happens to your body metabolically when utilizing intermittent fasting. And then that can lead to changes, overall changes, where they're, they're prescribing this kind of, of weight management strategy to actually activate other health benefits that are separated from simply a negative energy balance, which is being at a caloric deficit. So, I'm sorry. I just wanted to share this. I wanted to share my my enthusiasm for something like this, uh, and I wanted to share it with you guys. Now this thing is super long. I'm gonna obviously link this. Um, it, it is behind a paywall to look at it, but there's not really much to look at. It's just breaking down all the different intermittent fasting, uh, the popular ones, the 5-2, alternate day, modified alternate day, uh, time restricted feeding, which is the 16-8, but pushed to eating in the morning, uh, those kind of things. So they're just talking about it and then they're showing why all of these studies have caloric intake and it's skewing the information and how we need to push towards having uh, intermittent fasting studies with zero caloric intake during the fasting period. So just wanted to share that, super excited about that. And I can't wait to see the ripple effect of this and to see all of the studies coming out with just zero caloric intake. So just excited about that. Wanted to share it with you guys. I felt like, yep, it, de it deserves a whole video. Yes, it does. <laughs> so thank you for watching. And of course, I wanna thank my patrons from my Patreon. I'm gonna go ahead and put their names right up here. <music>